Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Uh, Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. The first day of the Tokyo Dome is in the books, everybody. And for those of you that have not seen it yet, here are your quick results. We had the New Japan Rambo, where the final four men would square off in a four-way tonight. And it came down to Chase Owens, a bad luck fall, a bushy. And literally, as he is coming to the ring as the final man, Toriano just is the fourth man because everyone else got eliminated. So he qualified for tonight's provisional match without actually stepping foot into the ring, which, as I've noted before, I mean, it's an idea that folks have had on and off for the Royal Rumble for a while now, which is... You know, number 30, the music hits, that person comes out, and as they're heading to the ring, the last two people eliminate themselves, so there's nobody in the ring, and so the last guy steps in the ring, or last woman, I guess actually Lana could do this this year. If ever there was a year for Lana to do this, to get her over, this would be a great year to do it, but it's been done now by New Japan, so there you go. Hiromu beat El Fantasmo, which, at least up until the final two matches, which I didn't see, this was the best match on the show. They had a very, very good match. And Hiromu won, and so we'll talk about that in a moment. Gorillas of Destiny beat Dangerous Techers to win the tag team titles. So the streak continues. Uh, you win the tag league, and then you win the titles at the Tokyo Dome. It's happened for years now. Kenta beat Kojima to retain the U.S. title certificate, basically like the Money in the Bank briefcase. Well, it ensures you're going to get a shot at the U.S. title. And before this match, they did in fact have a promo with John Moxley in the arena where they film New Japan Strong, challenging the winner of this match. So it does look like AW has given him the okay to work New Japan Strong, and he's probably going to defend his title against Kenta on a show coming up at some point. His AW contract allows him to do New Japan shows. It, well, actually, he has a New Japan contract, and he has his AW contract. But he can only work New Japan shows in Japan. His AW contract restricts him from working New Japan shows in America unless he's given the okay. And it does appear that he has been given the okay. Tanahashi beat the great Okan, and Okada beat Will Ospreay. And in the main event, I guess he's not going to celebrate in the Tokyo Dome. Maybe ever. Kota Bushi defeated Naito to win the IWGP heavyweight and intercontinental titles. That takes us to tonight, where we have the four-way Chase Owens, Bad Luck Fale, Bushi, and Toru Yano for the provisional King of Pro Wrestling trophy. Desperado and Kanemaru versus Taguchi and Master Wato for the junior tag team titles. Satoshi, or I'm sorry, Shingo versus Jeff Cobb for the never open weight title. Evil versus Sonata. Taiji Shimori versus Romu for the junior heavyweight title. And Kodabushi defends both of those titles tonight against Jay White. Mike, any thoughts on this show? I thought it was a pretty great show, to be honest. You know, it doesn't feel like a full fledged Tokyo Dome show. It can't without any fans there, but they definitely had the ambiance. They had the whole stage set up, and it. You know, it looked like a Tokyo Dome show, and certainly the length of it, because of COVID and everything going on, they've gone to shorter shows, which, you know, there's a negative there in that, you know, the 11-match big spectacle show is fantastic, but I also really have been enjoying these concentrated six-match shows as well, too, that New Japan's been putting on, so from a time point of view... You know, it was under three hours long, uh, not including the pre-show that had the Rambo in it. So it's it's an easy watch. And the last two matches are two of your match of the year candidates already. Okada and Osprey and uh, Naito and Ibushi flipped the coin on what match you liked better. They were both fantastic. They were both close to, if not five-star matches, just absolutely two fantastic stories told in both of them. Abushi and Naito, I know you were thinking that Naito might come out of it and get his celebration after two nights at the Tokyo Dome. 
Obviously, I've been talking about what I think they're going to do with Ibushi. Uh, it looks like uh, I'm right, at least for the first night, as Kota Ibushi defeated Naito, moves on to face Jay White, trying to shake off the demons from last year where he lost to both Naito and Jay White at the Tokyo Dome. So he's going to try to finish that loop tonight. I believe that he will. Uh, Osprey, I thought, would get to the victory over Okada. Uh, he did not, but... He came out of this looking like you never you forget about Will Osprey as a junior heavyweight. We're never going to see that again. The, every time we're going to see Osprey, it's going to be in there in a in a heavyweight championship mix or in a title mix, and just a fantastic match. And Okada, perfect. They are perfect opponents for each other. Just absolutely, you know, delightful. I'll be interested to see if anybody calls in and wants to talk about that. It'll be interesting to see of those two matches what everybody liked the most. And as far as the rest of the card goes, great Okan. I know you and Dave are not as high on him as some people are. I'm not as high on him as Adam Summers is, but I think that there's a, a lot of talent there, and I think there's a lot to build on there. And the biggest thing about last night was – he didn't get in the way. It was a fantastic vintage Tanahashi performance, and Okan held up to his end of the deal, I think, very well. So that was a really good match. Kenta and Kojima. Kojima stepping in there on short notice uh, for Juice Robinson, uh, who was injured. Finally, it looks like we're going to get Kenta and Moxley. Uh, Kojima put on a good match. Kenta gets the victory there. No surprises, no need to swerve, no need to do any of that stuff. And it looks like we're, as you mentioned, going to get Kenta and Moxley, which is great. The tag team match was really, really good between Dangerous Techers and Tamatanga and, Tamalo and Tangaloa. Unfortunately, you knew we were going to get some Bullet Club nonsense in there at some point, and that's where we got it. So unfortunately, uh, after 20 minutes, it kind of soured me on uh, what the match was. But if you take out the finish there, which you can't blame any of the competitors for, that's the booker's job to do all that sort of stuff. Up until the finish of that match, it was really very, very good. Phantasmo and, and Hiromu Takahashi once again, another match that lived up to its uh, absolute, uh, what everybody had hoped it would be. And once again, Hiromu Takahashi left a lot in his uh, in his holster for tonight in the, uh, the, the title match. Did not pull out all of his offense, but who did was El Fantasmo, who was the real MVP of that match. Did some amazing things. They, they looked fantastic with each other. And from a physical point of view, Fantasmo is everything that, that he's cracked up to be, even if you don't love his character right now so the only thing that leaves is the new japan rambo and i think we have talked about that enough over the last couple of days i don't like the concept i don't like the title in the first place i don't like they were what they were going to pull off having four guys make it for tonight you know this was an opportunity to get some people in there and to not make this such a, a comedy deal with yano and you could have had a bunch of young lions in there you could have had a bunch of old veterans in there you could have had a mix of both but looks like they decided to go with the comedy yano thing and place him in there with three members of bullet club for tonight so it is uh every bit of an opening uh jerk the curtain sort of thing but i would much rather see those stardom's women's matches that are on the dark uh, than watch this uh king of pro wrestling title anymore all right so they announced yesterday that there's going to be a new show coming to u.s and uk tv soon a new japan show and we don't have details yet, but it should be announced at some point. Obviously, they were on access for a long time. And where they go next, I do not know. I don't know if it's going to be a broadcast deal for New Japan Strong. I don't know what it's going to be, but they have, in fact, announced that that is coming. So we'll see how that turns out for both the U.S. and the U.K. I watch Strong every week on New Japan World. I like the show. It's a very simple show. I mean, most weeks, it's... You know, there's a couple of storyline-related angles, match-related angles. It's certainly not what you would see on Raw and SmackDown. But if you like good pro wrestling and solid pro wrestling matches, if you want to see a show where filthy Tom Lawler can wrestle Fred Rosser and it can win match of the year, well, New Japan Strong is for you. If you love these video clips, head down there to the bottom right-hand side of the screen and click Join. For just $7.99 per month, you get full access to all of the episodes, over 300 at current count, full-length episodes of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, and Figure Four Daily with both Landstorm and Filthy Tom Lawler. You can also hit that subscribe button, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows are available.